Hello, everybody. This is Dr. McBrick, and I am here in minifig form to answer some questions for my 2,000th subscriber special. But you know what? I probably should do this in person as opposed to the minifig form. So uh, let me change real fast. Hello, everybody. This is Dr. McBrick, and I am here with my 2,000th subscriber special. And first of all, I just want to say that I am humbled by having 2,000 subscribers. I never thought I'd get to 100, let alone 2,000. And with over 600,000 uh, minutes watched of the videos, um, I just uh, don't know what to say. I just want to say thank you very, very much for those of you who have supported me, who have uh, sent me messages via email and via uh, YouTube and Instagram and everything else. Just thank you so much for all that you do um, and for all of your support and everything like that. It's meant a lot to me over this past almost two years now um, of uh, doing this. So um, thank you. So with that, what I'd like to do is answer some of your viewer questions. Um, I had a lot of you who have responded via email and through YouTube on my video uh, that where I asked for uh, questions and stuff. So I want to answer your questions the best I can. I'm hoping to get to most of them. Um, if I didn't get to yours, please be assured I'll try to answer it in another time or in another stream. So let's get going. Okay, here's a question from Robin Hall, who is over in England across the pond. Hey, Doc, here's my question. Why Lego? And what attracted you to this particular toy? Well, I'll tell you what, Robin, I was attracted to this toy almost from the time that I was born. Um, it all stemmed from my grandpa. Now, my grandfather was a skilled tradesman. He was an electrician by, um, by trade, and he had a phenomenal workshop. And uh, he had this big workbench that he used to sit me up on when I was a little kid. And I would literally sit there and watch him work. Uh, I'd watch him build things, create things. And uh, he was one of these people that, uh, you know, never, never went to a repair person. He repaired anything, whether it was the stove, the cars, the house, whatever. So he was always working in his workshop. And I was always sitting there with my grandpa on his tool bench. And um, it was very, very special because, I, you know, he had stack-ons before stack-ons were even stack-ons, right? Um, and he had every part, every nut, bolt, screw, um, bracket, everything in his uh, in these uh, bins of his. And tools that I had no idea what they were and all kinds of gadgets and gizmos for all of his electronic stuff and electrical stuff. And uh, I just sat there and just took it all in. And uh, he actually, my grandma... And my grandpa were the first folks uh, to give me a Lego set. And this was back in the late 60s, early 70s. Uh, so the, the Lego system wasn't very old, unlike me uh, right now. Um, but it wasn't very old then. And so, uh, you know, I just saw the possibilities and I could just build. And, and so, so, so while, while Pap would sit there and, and uh, work on stuff, um, sometimes I'd get Legos on his workbench and, and, and work and stuff. And, and so to this day, when I look around and I, you know, and I, I smell freshly sawn wood um, or, uh, you know, I smell grease from a cog or something like that, you know, if I'm working on a car or doing something, I think of my grandpa. He's my hero and, um, you know, he didn't even know it, but he started me on this crazy Lego journey. Okay, this next one's from Brickman Dan. Oh, not, not with your face. <laughs> Just kidding. You know what, Dan? I'll tell you, um, I'm not going to keep my face in this uh, video too much. So don't worry. You won't uh, get scared or the, the glass won't crack on your device. Um, anyway, the question. Oh, about a question. Uh, do you see the hidden side making it another year or two? Or do you think it's a flop? That's a good question, Dan. You know what? Um, as you see here, I have the hidden side. I just got this set and I got it for literally 50% off at my local department store. 50% off. I got it for like $28 or something like that. Um, now this is the Shrimp Shack, which is probably of all the, the, the sets I want. This is the only one I really wanted. One, because of this element here. I love this car element, um, this seat, and I love it in this color. I also just love the way the uh, the shack is designed. and I can incorporate it into my beaches and stuff like that. Maybe the amusement park, I don't know. But in terms of the hidden side and the actual, um, you know, is it a flop or is it going to catch on or anything like that? Um, 
to be honest with you, I think it's kind of gimmicky. Um, you know, it's it's really cool. But the great thing about Lego is they're such a large company and there are so many people, just, you know, hundreds of millions of people who love Lego. So this in itself is something, you know, they, they make something for everyone as far as I'm concerned. So uh, um, I think this might take off. But do you remember... Lego Fusion. Remember from a few years ago? I think this has been like six or seven years ago. Lego Fusion, where they, um, it was kind of a hidden side type of deal. Remember? Where you would build a little model and then all of a sudden, boom, the whole town would appear on your Android or Apple device, um, if you remember. And that was a big deal. It was supposed to be the next biggest thing. The next biggest thing. Well, all I got to say is, um, you know, these things are great and they do kind of fuse the, uh, the electronic side, um, which we all know kids are into nowadays, obviously, and everyone is, not just kids, but adults. Um, but, uh, you know, they had the Fusion and uh, um, when was the last time uh, you saw a Lego Fusion on the, uh, on the store shelves? Um, so, and uh, the fact that I got this at 50% off already uh, and it just came out this year, um, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. This next question comes from BP Bricks from Instagram. They ask, Dr. McBrick, do you have a backlog? And if so, what's in your backlog? Well, it's funny you ask that because as a matter of fact, I'm going to take you to the inner depths of the basement and you'll see my backlog. We are now in the inner depths of the basement. Be afraid. Back behind that cardboard back there, is the Lego studio. Behind here where I'm standing is all kinds of scary stuff. But I'm not gonna show you all the scary stuff. I am gonna show you my backlog, however. Now, oh, look, now the lighting is bad. So as you can see, let's do shadow puppets. Oh yeah, let's do shadow puppets. Um, anyway, as you can see, uh, this is my backlog. This is the shelf, that old TV that was back there um, in the studio for a long time. That is now back here. And you can see some of the stuff we have. And again, I apologize for this light. Um, it's no good, but we have the brick heads, a whole brick head set. Those are great sets for parts. Um, there's just a little uh, City People set there. Uh, a Star Wars set uh, from a long time ago that we actually haven't opened. Um, that's kind of back there. Uh, let's see what else. Of course, Ninjago Docks. I have all kinds of Ninjago sets back here because, again, I'm going to do a huge Ninjago layout um, and all that sort of thing. So I have Ninjago Docks. I have the uh, Temple of Air Jitsu right there. Um, I have another uh, Ninjago movie um, set. Uh, that is the uh, Destiny's Bounty uh, right there. Um, up here, some more Ninjago sets. Obviously, uh, have uh, this is a uh, this is the um, Garmadon 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 uh, set. The shark, um, and I, I've been building it here, so it's there up there. Uh, that set, which I love, that mech. And then there's the old fusion that we just mentioned. And then this is another Ninjago set here that has uh, the bridge. I think it's that bridge. Um, there's one of those freebie sets. And you can see in here where man, the lighting is just horrible down here. But you can see all of the uh, bags. Bags and and poly bags and stuff like that. I have the hotshot gallery, which I've already built, so that's actually not in the backlog. Um, and then here I have uh, a number uh, 56 Emmett uh, brickhead from Walmart, which really doesn't mean anything, but it's number 56. Uh, and then I have a uh, like number 2000 and something there, um, Ron and Gandalf. Uh, and then back there, there's Ninjago Battle for Ninjago City, which is back there. Let me flip around a little bit. Okay, you can see a little bit better here. The lighting's a little bit better, but you can see back in there is poly bags. I have a whole case of the uh, Disney uh, minifigure set. Um, this set right down here is actually the Apollo 11 set, um, and uh, I still have to build that one. Um, this set here, uh, that set right there, that's uh, not a Lego set. That is actually an Oxford block set, and it's the large gate from South Korea um, that I went to when I was in South Korea, and I got that set because it really is cool. It's minifig scale, but it's this huge, beautiful gate and I would not do the name justice trying to pronounce it, so I won't try to pronounce it. But if I have any folks out there from South Korea that are watching this, please uh, 
type it in the uh, comments down below. Um, but it is just a beautiful gate, and I will use it probably in my Ninjago City because it's that good. Um, there's another case there of the mini, uh, the Lego minifigures uh, from uh, Lego Movie 2. We have the Battle of Air Jitsu, the Stranger Things, which I built the first house. I haven't built the trees or the second upside down house, um, and uh, I'll figure something out there. Um, there's Harry Potter. There's a case of Harry Potter minifigs. Those are uh, white uh, um, boxes there are actually, um, that's the actual Joker Manor um, and the, the roller coaster there. So uh, um, the Joker roller coaster manor. And then there's the big daddy, the big roller coaster that I keep uh, wanting to build, but just uh, just don't want to get into it right now until I get the space. Uh, and then, of course, the Disney Castle, which is waiting over there as well. So that is pretty much, oh, you know what? I have one more place where I store stuff. Right down here on the bottom shelf, of course, I have Ninjago City. Uh, couldn't forget that. That's a big daddy as well. And then I have Benny's Spaceship from the Lego Movie 1, which is the ultimate spaceship, I believe. And then there's the party bus from the Lego Movie 2. And there's that hidden side uh, shrimp shack. I can never say that right. Shrimp shack. Here's a question from Zabadoc. I love Zabadoc. I love his channel. He's just fun, friendly, happy. Um, here's his question. Curious, what is your opinion? Uh, what is your opinion of the nicest thing to do on your Lego channel? And when do you have enough parts to send me your sig fig? Well, Zabadoc, right here. Look at this. Here are all of the Dr. McBrick sig figs. They're the I call them the Dr. McBrick sig fig assembly kit signed personally <laughs> like it really means anything signed personally by me um and there's you can assemble them and put them together uh this one has extra hands not really sure why that one has extra hands um huh okay anyway um i guess i guess whoever gets this one is going to get two sets of hands just in case um so anyway as you see i literally have and i've turned them over because i'm not going to reveal anybody but i have all of these ready to go. Um, it's just a matter of getting to the post office and getting the $8 billion in postage to uh, be able to send these. Uh, <laughs> just kidding. Anyway, the second uh, issue, so I will get these out. I promise I will get these out. I know I've been promising people, but you can see I have the stuff, so there's no excuses. So hold me to account now um, to, for me to get you all of your stuff. The, the, the other part of that question, Zabadak, was what's your opinion of the nicest thing to do on your channel? I'm not sure what you mean by that in terms of the nicest thing to do in Figsdale. Um, I think probably the nicest thing to do in Figsdale is to uh, go to Six Figs and just enjoy, and uh, especially come over here to the uh, to the to the the um, snack bar and get some uh, wonderful uh, squishies uh, and um, and buy some uh, some gifts here at the uh, the gift shop. Um, but I'm not really sure what you mean by that. Uh, what's the nicest thing you could do maybe? Uh, if you, the viewer, or the subscriber? Well, subscribing is, of course, one of the nicest things you can do for my channel. Um, but, you know, comment, comment. Just send me your comments, ask questions. I can't get to them necessarily all at once. I um, mean, it might take me a few weeks or something, but uh, just the fact that, uh, you know, you make comments and uh, you're engaged with me in, in the channel and stuff like that, that's a really nice thing. And I appreciate that. This comes from Tracy, Tracy Anglesey, and uh, they ask, what are some of your dream mocks that you would like to make someday? Um, my One of my dream mocks is way back there, I would like to make a, some skyscrapers in the background um, and kind of make Figsdale uh, have a big business Wall Street-like district. Um, I'd love to make some skyscrapers. Uh, Adrian and I have been thinking about doing that. Um, so hopefully that would be one of my dream mocks that I would make. My other dream mock, my absolutely favorite dream mock that I want to make, and I will, I promise you, someday in the next year or two, is the Brady Bunch house and actually make a real Brady Bunch house out of Lego. So stay tuned. In the next 12 months, you might see the Brady Bunch house. My next question is from Samuel Turner of Rogue Bricks. And he says, congratulations on 2K, Doc. Well, thank you very much, Samuel. My question is, you have such a wonderful city, and it's really fun and so many points of interest. As a fairly new city builder, I sometimes get impatient that I can't grow my city fast enough. What words of wisdom do you have for new builders, and why is that important? Well, Samuel, that's an excellent question. And, you know, what you see here in Figsdale, 
was not built overnight. Uh, it took almost two years, to be quite honest. Um, we started I'm trying to find a place to put my iPad here. Um, uh, we started a, uh, this city um, back in 2018, and it's just getting ready to turn 2019. So, uh, uh, you know, one of my pieces of advice, Samuel, to be quite honest with you, is uh, that old adage, Rome isn't built overnight. Um, and so keep that in mind when building a city. Uh, and think about chunks in the city, like what chunks you want to build. For instance, um, we, when we started, we started with Main Street, and that was our first chunk. So we said we have so many, we have, we have Assembly Square and a pet shop and the detective office. Let's start with those three buildings, and let's just start with this chunk. Don't worry about all the stuff we want to do over here. Don't worry about all this stuff that we want to do over here. Let's just take this little chunk and make it really cool. So as you see, we take this and put little tiny details and things like that, we built this riverfront walkway and stuff like that in front of it. We figured out how to build the palm trees so they looked really cool. Maybe this little Statue of Liberty. And it all goes in front of this chunk right here. That's my best piece of advice, Samuel, that you could do for any new city builder, for that matter. Take something, whether it's if you just have one set, take that one set and embellish it. Add some greenery, add some texture. Uh, add some uh, um, story to it by, oh my gosh, there I am walking out of the door. I didn't even see myself. Um, I'm all over the place. Anyway, um, you know, add, add some, some life to that particular thing, that particular chunk that you're able to do. And then move on to the next chunk and then do that and add some life. Add a little pond, a little stream, that sort of thing. Do what you need to do um, in small chunks. Then move on to the next chunk. Then move on to the next one the next one, and so on and so on. If you look at it as all one huge thing like this, it's gonna be overwhelming. Um, but you know what, I find I do the same thing where I'm looking and saying, I wanna do this, I wanna do this. And you see that backlog that I just showed you. Um, it's okay to have a backlog and it's okay to have boxes of stuff that's lying down here that you wanna build but you haven't got to. Just enjoy it, take your time, enjoy it and just embellish and build up little things around each particular this next chunk question of your comes from josephine delvo and she says congratulations on 2000 subs you deserve it well thank you very much josephine my question number one if you remember what your first lego set was that you got and number two how often do you dust figsdale well those are great questions my first lego set again was given to me by my grandparents and it was a little truck car type of set you can make a truck or a car out of it and it had those those wheels that you stuck the axle in the axle pin into the hole in the uh the the two by four brick and i absolutely loved it i loved it because i could haul other bricks and i could just have fun with it now in terms of dusting figsdale you know what josephine I haven't dusted Figsdale yet, and it's been almost two years. Now, you might say, oh my gosh, it has to be super dusty. Well, I don't really think it is that dusty, to be quite honest with you. I mean, you can look around. One of the reasons why I think that I'm lucky in terms of not having to dust, now I might have to move the occasional, uh, you know, cat hair or something like that off of the off of the, uh, um, the, the, the city when it flies around, but one of the reasons why I think that it doesn't get dusty is because I'm down here in the basement right now. Oh, now look, I say that, and there is some cat hair. Um, I, I, I get down here in the basement and I'm right next to the air cleaner and the air handler in our furnace in our AC unit. So um, it, it, it really does, seriously, um, there's a vent right above me and it, it just kind of sucks the air um, off of the city and, and, and takes everything out of, the, out of the air down here. Plus, we don't live down here. And when you don't live somewhere, obviously, um, the majority of dust comes from humans, uh, remember? So uh, you know, I'm down here building, but it's not like this is our living room or a very played in area. Um, although we're down here quite a bit, I don't think we're down here enough to get it too dusty. Here's a question that comes from a, a friend of mine over in the UK and a fellow brick tuber, uh, Blockhead UK. And she asks, apart from Adrian and Piper, 
Do your older kids still enjoy playing with Lego, and are they proud A-Falls like their dad? Well, um, for those of you that don't know, I do have five children, um, from uh, Piper, who is eight, Adrian, who is 12, uh, Emerson, who is uh, uh, going to be 26 next week, and Megan, who is 21, and Brandon, who is 28. Now, um, Brandon, my oldest, is a proud A-Fall. He actually, um, we actually did a video that's on my channel. You can watch it and see his entire Rock Raiders collection and all of his Lego collections, Scooby-Doo, all kinds of stuff. He has a closet full of Lego sets that he's just itching to build, but he doesn't have the room for them right now. Uh, they just had a baby and everything, my first grandson. So uh, um, they are proud A-Falls, and uh, you can see Legos all around their house. It's really kind of cool. Um, now, my daughter Megan, uh, no, she doesn't uh, mess with Lego. Um, she is so talented in so many other ways, uh, and uh, she's a, a second grade teacher and um, just, uh, you know, is, is just so wonderful. But I don't believe her um, and her uh, boyfriend are into Lego. Now, um, my 26-year-old uh, Emerson, however, is, uh, and actually she's living with us for a few months um, right after grad school. She just finished, and uh, um, she came down to the Lego room the other day, and uh, she's like, hey, Dad, take a look at the city and see if you see anything different. I looked around, I looked around, I couldn't see anything, and then she pointed it out to me, and voila, she had built a dock to get onto the large boats to enter the Bay of Figs. And so she built this little dock that kind of just really goes with this particular um, Anton's fishing shop. And uh, so, yeah, so she's in Legos as well. And she has helped set up uh, the city in uh, Figs Doll Update number 30. You can see her handiwork at all of the placement of the mini figs and everything like that. So yes, um, my kids are, are in Lego. They still are, and uh, um, they are proud, uh, just like their dad. I guess I brainwashed him well. This next question comes from Lasse Erickson, who has a wonderful, wonderful Lego channel. Family friendly. He works with his kids on his city. Just a really nice, genuine person. Uh, he says, congrats. Well, thank you. Um, my question, if you could design a new brick, what would it be? Well, a couple of things. The first thing that it would be would be a masonry finishing tile. So you know how the masonry bricks have this nice indentation in them? Well, instead of having to use a million of these masonry bricks to do a sidewalk or something like that, it would be nice to make these in a finishing tile um, thickness and with the anti-studs on the back of them so that that way you can make a nice paver walkway by putting them all together on a base plate or something like that. Um, and you can make a brick walkway. So having a finishing tile that has these indentations for the masonry work would be wonderful. The next thing is would be having an actual T finishing tile. I think you could do some really cool patterns with this. So you'd have three across and then three down um, and uh, really two down uh, and and you could really do some some wonderful coloring patterns and things like that uh, with uh, the tile with a T tile like that and uh, that could come in pretty useful. The last thing that I just would love is, you know, when you're building a second story and you need a staircase, well, wouldn't it be nice to have a plate that is just this? In other words, maybe it's an eight by eight and it goes all the way across and then there's a hole in the middle. So all of this is empty right here. And that's where your stairs would come up. Now, I know they have something similar to that, but it would be nice just to have, um, and I don't know if structurally you could do it, but just to have one level of studs or one row of studs going around the rest hole. And then underneath here, have a little notch, a two by one notch that pops out so that you could attach this staircase on. So right now, if you look at this, and this is going to be hard to do because I just took it apart, um, but if you look at this in order, let's see here, hold on a second, um, in order to uh, normally do it, what you have to do when you come up to a floor, you have to do this, all right? And that causes some problems. Wouldn't it be nice if you had a notch in this hole um, or in, in this hole that existed here that you could just literally come up through this hole with the staircase and then put it on, and so the staircase would then mount flush um, to that the, the whole walking up. Um, that would help out a lot. Okay, Skyrocket's second question asks, how do you recommend landscaping something for a beach or similar? Well, two basic things, three really basic colors that you need. You need some kind of blue translucent type of thing, uh, really four, in a, in a blue um, base plate or uh, uh, tiles. Uh, I mean, uh, well, tiles could work or plates. And then this dark sand and then the light tan. Um, the dark represents wet sand. The light represents dry sand. And just go and get a bunch of different shapes and just, just put them together. Just 
stack them up. Don't forget to come out kind of little jetties of water and things like that. You can see I have those trans blue, blue uh, um, uh, tiles right there and things like that. Um, this is a real simple beach. Uh, what I want to do is get the darker tan and put in here all the way around so that that way it looks like there's wet sand and then dry sand, just like there would be at a regular beach. But another thing to do is add some depth by using slopes, by stacking plates on top of each other, um, and just put them in random patterns around so it looks like there's just random chunks of sand and, and globs of sand and things like that. Another thing you can do is add some of these translucent blue studs to make water kind of coming up onto the beach. You see I got a sand castle there. Use a profile bricks and some, some cylinders and things like that. Um, you know, don't be afraid. There's a wave coming up there with uh, some of these clear slopes. So uh, you can use, you see the texture back there, just a little bit of, you know, of, of a couple plates and things like that. Make it look like there's some sand um, kind of, uh, um, you know, gathering up and stuff like that along the beach. Um, I'll tell you what, there are a bunch of really cool beaches out there that have the wet sand and the dry sand, and they just go in levels like that and are really cool. I know Heather Bricks has a great beach if you look at her channel and her Instagram pages. Um, and, and so anyway, just use tan, dark tan, and just kind of layer the plates and uh, provide some depth and texture. P.T. McEwen asks, when did you first start playing with Lego? Well, I've already answered that. But the second question that uh, P.T. McEwen asks is, did you have a dark period? And uh, why do you continue to play with Lego? Good questions. Good questions. Yes, I had several dark periods. My first dark period came when I was in my mid-teens because, you know, a, a, a teenager has different kinds of things on their mind and all kinds of stuff. And so I just kind of got out of playing with Lego and building with Lego and stuff like that. Um, and uh, and that was kind of in the in the, the late 70s, early 80s. And there were other things going on at the time. And, and so I didn't get into Lego. So that was a dark period. And then, then once my uh, first uh, son was born and my kids, my first set of kids were born, um, I started to uh, really, really get back into Lego with them because we enjoyed building cities together. As a matter of fact, there's a video on my channel that has the old city that uh, um, my kids and I built back in the 90s um, with some of the sets we had and stuff. And then they got older and I kind of went into a dark period again. Uh, and then what happened was I came on some financial problems and, and hard times as we all do in life. Um, and I, you know, needed to make some money. And so I had all these Legos lying around and I had 153 sets at the time. And so I went ahead and sold my entire Lego collection to a family, um, and it was very, very undervalued. But you know what? It helped me pay my mortgage. It helped me get through some of uh, um, the hard times uh, that we, you know that that it, we all encounter in life, right? And um, I had no more Lego. Well, uh, then comes my second set of kids with my stepson, Adrian, and my daughter, Piper, uh, and we started to get into Legos again. And Adrian, we bought this first set right here, um, the firehouse, and it all started from there. So now I'm back in the game, and I don't plan on getting out of it again. Brick Pitt asks a personal question. What is the best birthday gift you've ever received? The best birthday gift I ever received, I still have, and it's nothing major. It's nothing that cost anything, but my three older kids, Brandon, Emerson, and Megan, they made me a card, and they colored it, and they put um, special thoughts for dad and all kinds of stuff on it, and they made it for me when they were real little, um, and that's probably the best birthday present that I've ever got. This next question is from Greg from GJ Bricks. Now, Greg's a, a, become a good friend of mine. He's living in Australia in Sydney, and uh, he has a great uh, um, Lego YouTube channel as well. Check it out. He's a fellow brick tuber. Anyway, his question is, do you use Lego in your doctor job? Now, yes, I do. First of all, I'm not a medical doctor. I am a PhD, which means I have a doctorate of philosophy. And my doctorate in philosophy is uh, um, in higher education. Uh, I'm a professor of popular culture and communication. Uh, and I've uh, taught for about almost 30 years now. Um, I did own a, a company, a tech company, prior to, uh, to teaching um, full-time. But I've been full-time a professor for 20 years. So, yes, I use it. I use um, to teach uh, the students. Students, 
Um, I use it in consulting. And as a matter of fact, I have a, a, a pretty, pretty decent uh, consulting company in terms of size and things. And we've been going around the world and, and doing consulting and uh, using Lego as a training tool and as a strategic development tool and things like that. Uh, so if any of you are out there who are interested in, uh, um, in having some professional coaching, leadership training, communication training, um, emotional intelligence, all that kind of stuff, um, and uh, use Lego in that training. Training, let me know. Let me know because uh, I am for hire, uh, so to speak. So um, anyway, uh, that's enough of that. You'll see more of that. I'll make a big announcement here in a couple of uh, um, in about a month or so about uh, some more professional Lego type stuff that I'm doing. So yes, I do do that. Now somebody else asked a question um, down here, uh, and if I can find it here, they uh, wanted to know um, that uh, if if my doctorate was in education, um, it's from the school of education. Yes, but again, it's in philosophy. Philosophy, uh, a PhD, um, but they said the Lego world is definitely in love with Dr. McBrick and your channel. Again, thanks. And this was coming from Brickitecture, uh, so thank you very much, Brickitecture. I appreciate that. The next, so the next question comes from uh, Ang Mo Sat, uh, and uh, they say, "Congratulations. My questions are: one, who is your favorite Lego minifigure? Two, what is your favorite Lego theme? And three." How much money do you spend on Lego each month? Well, you know what? Um, to be honest with you, um, I do have a budget, uh, and um, that budget, in terms of Lego budget, is uh, is set, and I I don't really go over that. I did when I first started, but I haven't done that in many many months. Um, I won't tell you the figure, but um, a lot of times uh, I'll use I'll sell a set, or um, now actually, um, to be honest, uh, YouTube revenue is starting to uh, to do pretty well, so um, that gets me some parts every month and and the set and things like that. So. Um, that's kind of cool. Uh, and thanks to you. Thanks to you. Um, but anyway, my favorite Lego minifigure um, is one that just came out. And I have been waiting for this since I was a kid. Goofy. Goofy is my favorite mini uh, fig uh, from Lego. Um, Goofy is my favorite character ever. So uh, um, Goofy, it was so great to see Goofy. Now, I don't have the train set, the Lego train set, but I managed to get Goofy. For, so, you know. Anyway, we can all get goofy once in a while, right? Um, and uh, what is your favorite Lego theme? My favorite Lego theme is the city theme. City theme, second, Ninjago. I love Ninjago. And I haven't even put together a Ninjago set yet. They're all, as you saw, they're all back there on the shelf. But I just love the way they look. I love the just the aesthetic of Ninjago. Um, and uh, But the city has to be. I mean, you know, that that's the go-to, right? That's where kind of most of us entered the Lego hobby and entered it as a kid um, from the city type stuff. I love city um, because there's so many different sub-themes. And particularly now with the sub-theme, the space sub-theme. Absolutely love that. Um, so yes, I would say my favorite uh, theme is the city. This next question is from Iron Patriot. And Iron Patriot says, which is your favorite part of Figsdale so far? Um, my favorite part is, uh, if I don't knock over the lights here, is actually becoming, and it has become, this part right here. Um, I, I just love this little area, this little ride right here where you go through the park and you see all of the adventure um, series and things like that. I'm, I'm just in love with it. And as a matter of fact, where you see the uh, Native American village, that's actually going to move out of here. And those boxes there, what's in those boxes will go in here as well. And this will continue this theme, um, this adventure theme and stuff like that. And we will do the, the Native American village and, and all the Western stuff in a separate area of Figsdale. But this is my favorite area right here because it's just... The it's just very rich. It's rich with a lot of things going on in it. Um, this ride that takes you through all these different things. It's rich with a lot of displays. Um, it, it's you know not necessarily just the actual sets. It's it's mocks. It's it's all different kinds of things going on at the islanders back there. I love um, little uh, kid land. Um, it's just all just if you ask me, it all comes together. This next question comes from BrickLover225. Have a few questions. What Lego theme is your favorite and least favorite? Well, I've already told you my favorite Lego theme. My least favorite, honestly, I don't really have a least favorite in a sense. I guess to be quite honest with you, and please, I know you will send me hate mail and stuff, but my least favorite, 
is kind of a Star Wars theme. <laughs> I know that's horrible. I know it's horrible. But um, I guess when I say least favorite, what I mean is the uh, things that I have the least. Um, and I only have a few Star Wars sets. Um, as, you know, and so uh, um, as I say that, I'm pointing right at this, the the. Uh, <laughs> one of the 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 Star Wars uh, Praetorian Guard there's but um yeah I don't have I don't have hardly any Star Wars sets so in a sense that's my least favorite um although they're really cool I just uh try not to go down that road is there a certain city sub theme that you like I already mentioned that is there a certain one that you first got and then you realized that's a good question actually then you realized after a set or two that you didn't like um no no nope, not really I, I like Lego because you know what? The way I look at it is even if I buy something and it, it the, the theme or the, the, the build the build is not good or whatever, I still have the bricks. And that's the great thing about Lego. You still have the bricks. Even if you don't like the theme, you still have the bricks and the parts. Do you think Lego should do a new version of older city and town sub-themes? Yes. There were so many cool um, sub-themes and, and town themes and stuff like that um, that I do think LEGO should do a new version of those. Here's a good question from John Cipriano. At what age do you think you are still going to be enthusiastic and still involved with LEGO? I'm in my mid-50s and people ask me what, I am do what I'm doing still with it all. Well, you know what, John? To be honest with you, I thought about this question a lot. And I thought just the other day, I thought, I wonder if I'm still going to be doing Lego um, when I'm in my 70s. You know, if I'm lucky to live to my grandmother's age of 93, am I still going to be doing Lego? I don't know, to be quite honest with you. My feeling is, yeah, I probably will be. For one, I still have, uh, um, you know, a nine-year-old and, uh, you know, Piper. And, uh, she, you know, she's going to get older and she'll have kids. Um, my kids, uh, you know, my older kids, my first grandson was born. So I know I'm going to be playing Lego with them. Um, and uh, it's a hobby. Uh, I used to do a lot of woodworking. Uh, I used to do a lot of building stuff, working on cars and things. But, you know, Lego's much cleaner. You don't get the fumes. You don't have to gasp for air and all that kind of stuff. Um, it's just as expensive, if not more expensive in some ways. But um, I really think that uh, I will be doing Lego as a hobby as long as I am, uh, you know, able to do it health-wise and stuff. I mean, right now, you know, I'm 53 years old, so uh, um, I'm right there with you, and I know what you're talking about, but it's a wonderful hobby. Um, it's clean. It's, uh, you know, family-friendly, um, and uh, and it's very, very therapeutic. Um, very th I get asked this question a lot, um, but this question here is from tanker 4 u one 2 3 and uh, Tanker asks, how big is Figsdale? I currently have a two, bi two big 64 by 64 base plates, and that's my town. Since it's coming up on Christmas, I remodeled it, turning it from a war-torn town to an Xmas cream or a Christmas themed town. And you know what? That's great. Whatever size you have, um, that's what matters. Is you just have fun with it, and you go with whatever size you have. Whether you have two base plates or whether you have a whole huge um, 124 square feet, like I have um, in this city, which if my math is correct, that's what I should have with all of these tables, adding them up and the inches on each table. Um, so about 124 square feet. Um, and this room here is a 28 by 28 room. And of course, it's not all filled up because I have, you know, aisleways and, and the middle is empty and all that kind of stuff. So, but that's the size. This next question is from Oscar's Lego World. And Oscar's Lego World asks, are you planning to get into Lego trains? Well, I'll tell you what, we do have a train track that goes behind Figsdale here, if you see. It goes all the way back here. Um, we plan on going off onto a siding. As you see, we're starting to do that into the Space Center, and they, uh, that way they can deliver things to the Space Research Center. It comes around here, and then it really shoots back through Figsdale. Um, and so what we're going to do is we, are, we will make it at some point either have a... Uh, um, a station down there at uh, at Ninjago, and um, or connect and go over the bridge and come back around here, and then loop all the way. Um, you see this? Uh, oops, sorry about going so fast. This will come around here, and you go all the way back through there. So um, yes, we will be getting into trains. It's just that we haven't done much with them. I know Adrian's been kind of chomping at the bit to do that. He loves trains. The next question comes from Blue Knight. 
And Blue Knight asks, who are your favorite Lego YouTubers? My fa I'll tell you, this, this is a tough one because you know what? To be honest with you, from the smallest to the largest Lego YouTuber, I just love anyone who does videos on anything Lego. Um, I have to say that uh, I started watching Lego YouTube um, videos with Jang. And of course, many of us kind of cut our teeth on Jang, so to speak. Uh, um, his videos are just the standard, um, especially the review videos and things like that. But I actually saw his, uh, the one where he did the drawbridge. I don't even know if he still has that in this city, but he did the drawbridge and I just loved it so much that really inspired me to look into more Lego YouTubers. And I did. Um, I love Beyond the Brick because they show the best of the Lego community. Their interviews are spot on. The guys, all of the people who do them and all the new folks who are getting into it on Beyond the Brick are just doing a fabulous job. And I love how they go from show to show and from place to place and just spotlight people like me, like you, and uh, all the different cool things that we do with Lego. Um, a few other ones that I like, I love Greg from Brickitect. And as a matter of fact, I loved him so much that I dedicated a park to him here in Figsdale, Brickatech Park for kids, because he and, you know, the little guy Clark, uh, they are just so genuine and so real um, that uh, it just it just warms my heart to watch them. Um, so I love his Lego, Lego channel. Uh, you know, there are just so many Lego YouTubers to mention. Um, I love G.J. Bricks because of the trains uh, that he has and all of the cool things he does with trains. Um, I love uh, uh, Blockhead UK because of all of her micro builds and, and all of her, her habitat builds and things like that. Um, just all kinds of uh, Robin Hood Bricks. Um, just, you know, I could just go on and on and on. Um, there are so many that I really like. And uh, um, it's just, you know... It's just amazing to me that, that we all share something with this Lego hobby. And of course, Bricks are. I love the fact that he's into the old um, sets and, and things like that and, and the unique sets that you just don't see. Um, and I love that. And I, I really uh, have gained inspiration in, in doing some of my old set reviews and things uh, based on how great his videos are. The next question comes from Julie Rose Lee, who asks, when will you start building your Lego bridge across your city? And that, for those of you that haven't seen, um, that this road right here is, is going to connect and it's directly across from this connection here. So at some point, there will be a bridge, <laughs> like uh, Simon and Garfunkel said, there will be a bridge um, from there all the way over here. A bridge over troubled water. Um, and then the Bay of Figs will expand and that will be water out there and things like that. Um, Julie, to be quite honest with you, I'm not sure when we're going to do that. I would say that's probably down at the bottom, toward the bottom of the list. Um, we, you know, we're lining things up and as we build and, and stuff like that, we definitely keep that in mind, but um, it probably won't be for a while. I would say maybe late 2020, um, just because there's so many different things that we have to do. This next question comes from Legoverse, everything Lego. And Legoverse asks, what is your favorite structure in your amazing city? Well, first of all, thank you very much for calling it amazing. This is my favorite structure. It is Smitty's Repair Shop. And Smitty's Repair Shop was a modeled after a mock that my kids and I, my older kids, my now adult kids and I built when they were little kids. 20 years ago, um, well now 21 years ago, we built a, 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 a car shop because we like cars, we're into cars, all that kind of stuff. Um, and so about a year ago, and, and you can see the video here on the channel if you dig far enough, um, I built this particular mock, designed it in, uh, in Lego Studio, or in, uh, in studio um, and uh, just, uh, I just love this structure and, and I, I have to show you. Um, but this was, this was kind of an homage to what the kids and I had built way back then. And of course it was nothing like this, but it had this, the same type of stuff on it. And uh, it just means so much to me, um, this particular mock, because uh, um, you know, I just remember every time I look at this thing and uh, I just remember, you know, my my kids just building this and we played with it and we had so much fun um, with Smitty and all of the gang um, that worked on cars for our city and stuff. And it just really, 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 um, really gets to me. I just, I, I just, I just, I love this building.
Well, that's about all I have. Thank you very much. This has been a fun video to do, I'll tell you. Thanks so much for the 2,000 subscribers. And even if you're not subscribed, thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. Um, if I didn't answer your question or didn't get close to it, um, please uh, uh, comment in the section below and I'll try to answer it as much as I can. It's hard to keep up with all the questions, but give me a week or two and I'll, I'll answer them as they come. So um, thank you very much. Uh, please remember that I am a member of the wonderful BrickTubers Network and all of the BrickTubers can be found in the links in the description below. Thanks for everything. Thanks for the Lego love. You folks out there have helped our family and myself in so many ways, more ways than I think you'll ever, ever know. We just appreciate everything that you do in, when, when you comment and, and when, you, when you view our videos and subscribe and do everything. We just really appreciate it. So thank you so much. I can't really say anything else. This is Dr. McBrick signing out.